Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for another fabulous speed build. Today we are building a mansion. For those of you who are on live with me as I attempted to build this monstrosity of a house, thank you for being there. Um, and now you get to watch me yap over the footage all sped up. Congratulations you, my friend, have made it. Um, but this is a huge freaking house and we're going to talk very lightly about it because then we, we got to talk our shit, okay? I got some shit to talk and I want to do it with my favorite people. Um, really myself and then all of you. So, <clears throat> this house has everything as you can tell by the title. I believe this house ends up being a seven bedroom, seven bathroom house. It is complete with a garage, a gym, a sauna, a library a music room, a nectar making room, a movie theater, a game room, a bowling alley, a greenhouse, a splash pad, a pool, an outdoor movie screen slash garden area. Um, it has a telescope. It has a basketball court. It has a tree house. It has a playroom. It has a fish tank. I put everything you could freaking imagine in this house and I am like mildly obsessed with it but again I'm mildly obsessed with pretty much everything I do so I really think this build came out super good I really enjoyed getting to make it and I modeled it not exactly sometimes I do it exactly like if you watch me build a lot then you know I do this quite often sometimes it's exact and sometimes it's just like close enough but I did model this after a real life house and a real life floor plan thank you Pinterest honestly Pinterest needs to be saved from me because I I love Pinterest, okay? What else did I forget to mention this house has? It also has an outdoor kitchen and it has a playground and a hot tub and it has an outdoor fire pit. It, it This thing has got everything. It also has the largest kitchen I have ever put in a Sims house. Like, it is so large. It's not empty, but it's, it's similar to the size that you see in those ugly ass fucking EA builds where the house is just ginormous but there's nothing in it. Except we actually put stuff in here. You're welcome, but I had a fabulous time, and I did actually end up almost um, buying more packs just to put more stuff in here, um, because as literally the day I finished this was the day before the new Crystal Creation stuff pack came out, and I was like, am I going to put this in there? I didn't, but I did think about it. Oh, it also has an art studio. Oh my god, idiot sandwich, but we're kind of getting together. We're almost done here, and I just love the way the floor plan came out. It ends up being kind of closed off in a lot of aspects, which is different for me because I typically gravitate towards, like, a more open floor plan because that's what I like in real life and that's what I prefer. I apologize that some of this footage is going to be hard to watch. It's very, like, jumpy, and at some point if you're like, okay, I thought you didn't finish this, but now we're going back and we're finishing the room, I built this house over the course of, like, mmm... Probably like two weeks. I think in total I had like 10 hours of footage and that's only what I filmed because I did not film a majority of the landscaping. Um, I did cut out some of the floor plan at one point. I know that. Um, basically I was just popping it. I also cut out the bathrooms and I almost didn't do that because for once, mark it here because it might not happen again. For once, I actually decided to make all the bathrooms different. Um, just because I wanted to, like, I just put, like, a lot of detail in this house. I had so much fun doing it. And honestly, it, it might not be the best thing I've ever built, but it is pretty freaking cute. Um, I also never build with basements or use the bowling alley stuff, so, like, I was doing my best, okay? No one come for me. It does not end up looking like this in the final product. There is a lot of things that get changed and kind of rearranged. Uh, because again, I had to tweak the floor plan that I was trying to use, as well as the fact that, um, you know, I'm a creative person to some extent. Um, so I did my best, but we're hopefully going to be done with like all the scooting around floor plan bullshit. We can get into the decorations. I just like to decorate. Um, but we're going to get there soon. <clears throat> and uh, so other than that, I know you guys are probably like, Tiana, talk to us. Talk your shit. So I just want to preface this and tell you guys, um... My eyebrows look like this because I just got them tinted. They look more normal after I, like, wash my face and, like, do all that. So, I don't want to hear any comments about my eyebrows, okay? I like the girl who does them for me, and they will they will look more slay when they're a little bit toned down, okay? 
Next. As many of you know, I recently graduated college. And because I recently graduated college, I have been attempting, in every sense of the word, attempting is like, oh my god. Anyway, so I've been attempting to find a big girl job. The job market here in the United States, where I live, is not super fun right now, okay? Not super fun. So, back in October, I found this company, really wanted to work for them. I had networked with a lot of people who worked there. Um, many of the people who I would be working directly under or directly with actually graduated from the same program that I was in at the time in October. And I'm like, oh my god, I have like a great background for this. I, I know a lot about the products they sell. And it's an entry-level position. I have the experience. Like, I have a good sales resume, okay? I freaking... I was a Girl Scout for like 10 years. And that might be like, ha ha ha. But like, for those of you who know about the Girl Scouts, you know, like, it'd be, it'd be teaching you things. <clears throat> I've worked in customer service, and specifically customer service in sales since I was like 17. And I've done internships, and it's an entry-level position. That and I graduated with a degree in sales. I competed in sales competitions, okay? So like, it's an entry level position. Those seem like the qualifications for an entry level position. So I apply back in October <clears throat> for a specific territory and like um, three weeks later I get rejected. And I was like, mm, okay, I'm gonna do what like a normal person does. I'm gonna follow up with the contacts I have at the company. So I follow up with somebody who I know, who I'd met through my, he was a volunteer with my program, but he was like a manager at this company. And I was like, uh, como se dice? And he was like, I'm gonna be honest, the territory you applied for, probably, like, were, it was at the time of the year where they were reevaluating territories, if they were gonna keep the specific territory, he's like, honestly, we're not sure if this territory is gonna even, like, be a thing anymore. Okay, fair enough, but, like, if that's, if that's the case, why are you promoting this specific territory and job on LinkedIn? And like on LinkedIn, people and companies can pay to like promote a certain job. So like you're actively taking applications. All right, but you don't know if it's gonna exist. And that's like, okay, little red flag, but like, what do I know? Like I said, entry level, never been a corporate America baddie. So what do I freaking know? <clears throat> Flash forward, I'm like, I'm gonna apply again because at this case, or at this point, Another territory opens up, and I'm like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to apply for the same one again. It's been, like, three or four weeks. Um, it was just after Thanksgiving, because mind you, this started in October. I apply again. I get an email back from the recruiter. And she was like, let's do, like, a phone screening thing. It's pretty standard from what I've seen with sales jobs um, and maybe other jobs as well, but I don't know about other jobs. So, like, you'll talk to the recruiter, like, 15 minutes, and they're like, hey, this is what the job is, like can you talk? Do you, is this actually what you like want to do? Um, so I scheduled that and it was supposed to be scheduled the week before Christmas, but that doesn't happen. Okay. So then I try to reschedule for the week of, or I schedule it for the week of New Year's. Okay. Reach out morning of like two hours before my scheduled call, send an email. I was like, Hey girly pop, looking forward to speaking to you on the phone today. Play. Time comes for our, our phone call. Nothing. Nothing. So I reach her back out and she's like, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, what the fuck do you mean? I put it on your Calendly. Like, you have, like, a literal automated calendar. But, like, whatever. Like, shit happens. And she's like, yeah. Like, she explained to me, like, the mistake they were having and something with the technology. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. So we reschedule it. We reschedule it. It goes fine. And she's like, I'm hoping to have you in for, like, your first formal interview, technically my second interview, um, within the next week. Three weeks go by. I finally do this first round interview. Goes well. Thought I did well. Um, you know, I feel like I'm a strong interviewer. As you can see, I have great interpersonal skills and can just yappy, yappy, yap. And I use a calendar of, or a word of the day calendar app. So I, I be using big words sometimes, okay? Okay. And at this point, like, I'm in Delulu energy. I am in so Delulu energy. I'm at my day job, and I'm telling my manager's wife, I was like, they're hiring me. Like, they don't know it yet, but they're fucking hiring me. Like, full delusion. Feeling all the confidence that you might need when you're trying to be a corporate America baddie. Go to the interview. Goes great. And go to the second interview. Awesome. 
Um, the second interview also goes well. It was like with like a higher up manager. He was like, honestly, you're really great. Look into your email. I'm still following up. Okay. I'm following up. Then almost 20 days go by. Do a third round interview. Awesome. You'll know by the end of the week. Keep in mind through this whole process, they're giving me deadlines that they create and missing them. And I'm like running them down. Like, Hey, you can't send a freaking email. I am in a toxic, abusive relationship with this company at this point, okay? Like, they're like my boyfriend, but they just don't fucking like me. And so I'm doing my fucking best. Doing my fucking best. And my best is not good enough, okay? So, finally, I get a hold of the recruiter. And she's like, yeah, so we filled the position. We filled the position. Okay. I'm a little devastated. I'm a little mad because I felt like I was really good. But, like, you know. Someone else could have been better. That shit fucking happens sometimes. So, I was pretty, pretty sad. But then she hits me with, like, so we filled the position you applied for. And in our first interview, you mentioned that you were open to relocating. Let me clarify what I said because I, I was very careful about what I said. I said I would be open to doing one of the surrounding territories to the position in which I applied for because... I'm the new kid on the block. I'm just trying to get some experience. It's not ideal to have to commute an hour and a half or, or 45 minutes to your territory. But, like, you know, you do what you can so so I can, like, start climbing the totem pole. I made it blaringly clear that I was not moving out of Central Florida. And you know what? She, she looks me in the face and she's like, you could maybe get the Key West job or you could maybe move to Pensacola. Like, two opposite sides of the spectrum. By the way, we won't be paying for you to relocate, and it's still a maybe. <clears throat> and so, like, note to self for all the corporate body wannabes, and honestly, maybe just, like, a practice in general in your life, you can change your settings, so when you send an email, you can, like, time it, so, like, if you hit send, it won't send for 15 or 20 minutes, or, like, you can customize the time, but I have mine sent for, like, 15 minutes. Good thing I do, because I typed out the nastiest, most fucking heinous email I could ever imagine, but all in, like, corporate America talk, so, like, I didn't say fuck, but I said fuck without saying it, you know what I mean? So, I am hot. I'm hot. I'm devastated, okay? My freaking ego smashed on the ground, on the fucking ground, okay? So, like, okay, whatever. So, like, the spiteful little nugget I am... I go online. I look up their top competitor. You know what I do? I apply for the top competitor. I do that shit. And I got an interview. I did three rounds of interviews. And then after the third interview, they ghosted me. That's another story. But just know it's only adding to how unwell I'm feeling. But we're, we're, we're going to talk. We're going to have a whole thing, okay? So, they reject me. You think that's done, it's over. No. No, because this is a toxic relationship. We are in the cycle of abuse with corporate America at this point, okay? So... I'm just doing my thing. I'm like, I'm going to go pop it for the freaking competitor and like, you know, like make you miss me or whatever. Then the recruiter reaches back up to me. She was like, hey, queen. Love you. Want to loop you into something. I was like, okay. I'm not that busy. I was not busy. Or I was like, I'm kind of busy. So you hurry up. But like, I wasn't busy. Um, and she's like, we actually are thinking about creating a new territory, like splitting up. They had like two fairly large territories and the volume was high enough that they were like, we'd love to kind of carve out a new territory for you. The team likes you. Um, like I said, I had a lot of contacts for pe with people who worked in management and on the team. So, and I, I told you, I thought I interviewed well, okay? Like, maybe I'm delusional, but I feel like I interviewed well. So they call me that, and I'm a little weary. I'm a little hesitant, and I'm like, okay, thank you for, like, reaching back out to me. But next time you reach back out to me, like, I would appreciate if you don't reach out again without a, a definite yes or no answer because I, I can't keep doing this, okay? It's not good for my mental. So, you know, a couple days go by. I'm feeling kind of like pooey poo pie at this point. And I get, I, I get a text. And it was like, hey, we would love to offer you this position. Um, we have to get it formal or finalized through HR. And then it proceeds to kind of break down, like, the financial aspects, like, how much money I would be making, um, and what the compensation plan looks like, as well as the onboarding, and et cetera, et cetera. But this is an informal offer. I never had a Delulu in my brain that this was a formal offer, because it wasn't. So, okay. I'm like, okay, how long is it going to take for it to be finalized? Like, and I have a written offer letter from HR to sign. 
Probably about five days. Hmm. Five days. Okay. Flash forward seven days. No written offer. There's a new a, a, a new manager for this specific territory. Not new to the company. Not new to the job. Just new to the territory in which he's doing the job. Get an email. Hey, he wants to meet you. Okay. She's like, it's not an inter interview. I know, though. I knew it was an interview. It wasn't, like, a formal interview, but, like, he's trying to make sure he's not going to waste his time hiring some dumb bitch, you know? And I respect that. Okay, I was ready. I was ready. I was bringing my fucking A game. And I was like, let's get this over ASAP because I want this formal fucking offer letter because I have chronic anxiety and obviously have a little bit of a self-worth issue because at this point I'm feeling kind of low over the whole not being able to get a job. I'm doing fine. We'll unpack that in a second, okay? So, do the interview and thank God, like, I'm, I'm a crafty ass bitch because I was like, yeah, I can do tomorrow. It's like Tuesday at like 9.30 a.m. I email her back immediately. I was like, I can do tomorrow at this time. And I give her like four times. She's like, let's shoot for tomorrow at 11 a.m. Never get a confirmation. She's like, I'm going to email him, see if it's cool. And I'll send you over the confirmation via Zoom. At 10.30 for this 11.15 interview, she sends me over the confirmation like day of. So like, good thing I was in, in the fucking headspace, okay? I was ready. I was ready to kill this shit, right? do my interview I think it goes well it was very informal I did find it a tad odd that like he knew literally nothing about me and when I say nothing about me I mean like what school did you go to where did you graduate from what territory are you looking to work and like that is all stuff like you can like glance at. literally if you looked at my resume it's in big bold le like it would take you 18 seconds to find out that information about me but like whatever busy guy you, you'd think a recruiter or the other managing partners that I had spoken to at this point would have, like, sort of kind of filled him in. Whatever. At the very end of the interview, I thought it went well, and then he said something. I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but it was worded very oddly. And he was like, we'll let you know our decision um, by, it was like a Wednesday, by the end of next Friday. So, like, almost a week and a half. Which, by the way, the day I'm filming this, this is fresh, okay? This is fucking fresh, this hurt. I don't know if you can tell what's today okay so I just thought that was a little weird I'm like okay did he do that to like manage my expectations because at this point I've been given a verbal informal offer so like what fucking decision are you talking about what fucking decision okay the decision they gave me okay I'm assuming you know where this is going but I'm just gonna tell you I'm just gonna tell you exactly how it went down I am even gonna read you the email that I got so I email Friday 4 30 email the recruiter like hey just reaching the frick out because you know what I'm antsy they're moving forward with another candidate I apologize for the long process and uncertainty ultimately they think the position requires more experience okay so at this point it's taken you almost six months to fill an entry-level position and you didn't fill it you told me you need more experience or someone with more experience it's an entry-level position it's an entry-level position I can't reiterate it enough I mean it says it in big bold letters on the freaking job description on the LinkedIn okay I am devastated I'm so mad and so angry because I already knew I said it the first time they rejected me I was like honestly they have not had their shit together why would I even want to work for them because they do okay because I'm sad and I really wanted to work for them and I really want a job and self-esteem and the world is scary and you know a lot of things okay I can't explain to you why I want the boy who doesn't like me to like me back but that's how this feels that's how I that's how this feels okay okay I am so upset so some I take a screeny Send it to Heather. Shout out Mama Heather one time. Love you. And I told her the email that I wanted to send. And she was like, fuck it. Send that shit right now. And I proceeded to say, hello. Thanks for getting back to me. Ultimately, I've been waiting for someone to reach out by the deadline I was informed of. So I appreciate finally getting an answer. As for searching for another candidate with more experience for an entry-level position, months of interviews, and an informal offer... It would have been beneficial for everyone involved to have been more honest in the name of efficiency. Maybe it's something worth discussing with your team as you move forward. Best, Tiana. 
For those of you who don't know a lot about corporate America, I just fucking flamed them. I flamed them. I was not nice. I was a bitch. And I would do it again. I wish I was more bitchy. I wish I said the word cunt in the email. But I didn't. Because I'm trying to be a better person. But at this point in time, I don't really see the value in that. Because I was being a nice person. They were fucking running around on me. And I was like, mm, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You, like, you know when you meet someone who's like kind of toxic. And you're trying to show them like love and grace and patience. Fuck that. Be a cunt, okay? So, you know, at this point, that's what I'm trying to, to get across. Like, I'm pissed. And I will tell you, this is not the recruiter's fault by any means. She was actually very, like, kind. And I could see that she was frustrated with trying to give me answers and not getting them herself. Like, things were falling on her as, like, the, the kind of, like, the coordinator, the mediator. But, like, the decision ultimately didn't come from her. Nor did the roundabout treatment kind of come from her. But I digress. Six months of my life. I am hurt, okay? I'm hurt, but I'm also angry. And I share this story with you mostly because it is much less expensive than going to therapy. And this is a really long fucking speed build, so I needed something fucking spicy to talk about. And it's also one of the reasons I delayed the video because I was like, mm, let me watch what I say in case I actually do get this offer and I end up taking the job. And I still would have told the story just as candidly, but I would have waited till I signed my offer letter. Anyway... I don't care. I don't care what that makes me. You can make fun of me for that. I, I, I just want them to, to pick me, okay? Choose me, pick me, love me, you know, whatever. That's where I'm at. But, like, I waited so I didn't, like, talk my shit about my job. Fuck that, okay? So, the lesson is, if you are looking for a job and you are not having a lot of luck, probably ain't you. All right? And I'm really big on being, try like, trying to be self-aware. Like, always do a lot of reflecting. I have anxiety to prove it. But, like, this shit was not my fault. Ultimately, the job market is kind of booty. And being a new grad is really hard. The other lesson to be learned is life is too short to not call somebody a bitch right to their face. So, the next time you get the urge, let it roll. Okay? Let it roll. Unless it's your mom then you know what? You didn't hear that from me because I would never call my mom a bitch. I love her and I am also fearful of what she might do if I did. Um, and I believe that's a healthy level of a uh, children parent kind of lesson. So, you know. Anyway, I've had a really tough time and now I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. And I could always try to marry Rich and I don't know. Maybe... I just want to own a Christmas tree farm. I don't really want to be a corporate America baddie, but like, I've really been trying to girl boss, but I'm not, I'm not girl bossing towards the sun. I'm, I'm somewhere out the other end. Okay. I'm by Pluto. I'm like a rejected planet at this point. And you know, don't, don't let things like that, like kind of affect your self worth. And I'm saying that as I'm actively like letting that happen, but <laughs> Life is hard, okay? Life is hard and being a grown-up is sucky and just be a kid as long as you can. And also, if anyone has any suggestions for what industry I should apply for next, let me know. Let me know. I'm open to anything. Um, because at this rate, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And don't get me wrong, I love my day job and I would plan on keeping it, honestly. Because I genuinely enjoy the people I work with and what I do and I en enjoy the people I work for, most importantly. Um, but I also, like, want a 401k, so, and, like, maybe, like, benefits. I'm, if I don't have a job with benefits or get married by the time I'm 25, just know I would literally rather die than go into medical debt. Um, and if any of you who are watching right now are not from the United States, you might not, you might be making fun of me, and, like, I, I deserve that. We deserve that. We deserve it. But anyway, speaking of my day job, let's just keep these fucking bad vibes going. Let's just keep complaining because that's what I feel like I need at this point. So I was at work the other day and I try to really keep a positive attitude. Um, I, I feel like it, it helps me make more money. It helps me have a better overall mood, helps me have a better night at work, but it can be very stressful. I work at a very high volume nightclub. Okay. So, you know, when there's 2,300 people in a nightclub and they're all being very, like, 
picky and bossy and, and wanty and it's it's hot and it's loud and like etc etc it can be frustrating like anyone who works in the service industry like if you've ever been in the weeds if you know what that means like you know it, it can be a fucking experience that's not that fun so I'm at work I'm trying to be like a slay ass bitch like I always try to do and it's very busy and when I say it's very busy it's not the kind of busy where like if you work in the service industry, you might notice how busy it is. I mean, like, anyone with eyes at that point could have known it was busy. The bar was probably six or seven rows of people deep. There were probably 200 people on my side of the bar alone, just fucking throwing credit cards in the air, trying to get drinks, you know, asking for water, shoving each other, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. I have a way I work. And I, I know sometimes people try to be nice, and they're like, oh, they were here first, like, serve them first. You don't know how my brain is working? Sometimes I'm not serving someone because they're a fucking asshole. Sometimes I'm not serving someone because I already know what they want, so I'm asking you what I want, or what you want, so I can, you know, be more, like, efficient about doing my fucking job. Um, sometimes I've already asked, and, like, if, if you ask me for a water, I'm happy to make it, but, you know, you have to give me a second because... At the end of the day, like, it's my job and, and like, it, it's required for my lifestyle that I make money. And if you're not spending any, you can wait four minutes for water. It's okay. Okay? You know? And I like to make my waters in, like, abundance. So, like, if you ask me for two and you ask me for two, like, if I have, like, three or four people who have asked me, I'm like, okay, and I make a bunch. You know? Efficiency, okay? So, this lady has her credit card. I'm going to use something as a fake credit card. I don't know what. Just maybe this envelope. She got her credit card, and she's like, on the, on the bar. And that's, like, really frustrating, and she's waving at my face. She's yelling at me. And keep in mind, she had not waited nearly as long as several other people at the bar. She was not next in line. That's, that's not how it fucking works, okay? So I finally get to her. She waited maybe five or ten minutes, and that's not too bad, especially with how she was behaving and how busy it was. I said, what can I get you? She said, I want a Bud Light. I said, absolutely. But just, like, just so you know, I didn't really, I like, I don't really like when you people do like this to us and, like, the bartenders don't really like it. Because if it had been some of the other people I work with, they would have had her thrown out without even saying a word to her. So I'm just like, hey, like, maybe you don't get it. Like, maybe you, sometimes people need to be reminded of things or they don't know because they've never worked in that kind of job. So I was like, hey, we don't really like that. It's not really cool. It's kind of fucking bitchy as fuck, but I didn't say that, okay? And I turn around, and I hear her talking shit about me. She's, like, screaming. I don't know if she was drunk or loud or both, but she wanted to fucking smoke. I go get her, her beer, open it, give it to her. She gives me the card. I said, do you want to open a tab? She said, close it. And I said, unfortunately, um, where I work, we have a $10 minimum. Um, and it's very standard practice in um, bars that you work at like that, like that are like a club or a bar like that. Um, because like credit card fees and also if I swipe, if I took the time to close everyone out immediately every single time, it would just slow service down. There's a lot of reasons, okay? There's a lot of things that go into it. And she's like, well, I want to close it. I was like, okay, so the options are you can pay cash. There's no minimum. You can buy more so you can hit the minimum or you can leave the tab open. Give me three then. Okay, let me go get the other two. And she's like, this fucking bitch, boop, 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 boop. I was like, huh, deep breath, deep breath, hallelujah. So I go get the other two beers and go to hand them to her. And she throws the fucking card at me. You know how I try to be real dice and I say slay? I want to let y'all know I'm a middle child from people. I was raised by parents that did not believe in telling on people. Me and my sister used to beat the fucking shit out of each other, okay? We used to, we used to go at it. So I can scrap, okay? I can fucking scrap. And I was like, I'm not going to be confrontational. I, you know, I'm not afraid of confrontation, but I, I don't prefer it. I'm a sensitive person. So I picked the card up and I handed it back to her and I took the first beer I gave to her. I took it back. She's like, excuse me. And I said, um, you can't speak to me that way. So you're going to have to go to another bar. I turn around, start helping someone else. <laughs> excuse me. Yes. I want three Bud Lights. I don't know if you didn't understand me. You're not going to be served at this bar because the way you chose to treat me and speak to me. 
And if you open your mouth again, I'm going to have them escort you out. As well as everyone you're with. You're with like 12 people. You're going to ruin everyone's night because you don't know how to act. I didn't say that part, but that's how I, that, that, that was the point, okay? So I ignore her. And you know how bad something has to be for like other patrons? Like I had other people around the bar who I did not know who were like, what's her fucking problem? I was like, I don't know. Maybe because she's never been smacked in the fucking face before? Ugh. Sorry, I'm having a hot day, guys. I'm having a hot day. So, she comes back, like, 25 minutes later, and slams these three beers, like, as, like, a fuck you to me. Something you guys should know. If you ever go out to a bar, nine times out of ten, it's not a democracy. So, I took the time to go get a bouncer and have all 12 of their guests boot it out. Um, because I don't care who you think you are, you don't treat people like that under any circumstances. So she didn't get to drink any of the three beers she bought, and they wasted their money on cover, and I hope that at least half of her friends were like, you ruined our night because you were a bitch. Because one of the people who she was with was like, I'm so sorry for her, like, I don't know why she acts like this. You guys know what I'm talking about when you have a friend that, like, ruins the night out for everyone because they're, like, too drunk or they're confrontational, or they're fighting with their fucking partner, like, the entire time. You know what I'm talking about. That was her. And I was just in a hot freaking mood. It was, it was honestly one of the worst days I've had at work in months, because it's, like, that spring break time, so you have a lot of people from out of town, and it just gets way more crowded, way more busy. But, like, you know, patience, dignity, and at the very least, if you throw your fucking credit card at me, you're going to be lucky if I don't throw these fucking paws back at you. Because I thought about it. I did. Really scrappy. I've had a very tumultuous week. So there, all that happened. And then, I can't tell you all the details about this story, but, like, long story short, my best friend, her boyfriend, is a piece of shit. Okay? And I told him that to his face. Um, there's probably more I could tell you about that story, but just know I did that. And... I'm not sorry about it. And I, like, okay, everything I've said up until this point, you're probably like, you are one confrontational ass bitch. I'm a good storyteller, okay? Um, and I'm not afraid of confrontation. Like, if you're mean to me and you scream in my face, I will, like, get back in your face, okay? I'm a Hispanic girl from New Jersey, and I have a middle child god complex, okay? I'm not afraid to duke it out with you, especially verbally, but, like... I'm also a very sensitive person with anxiety, so, like, I'll probably cry afterwards and call my mom, um, because it's, it's just who I am, okay? It's just, I don't know, maybe you know what I'm talking about, maybe you don't, but, like, my heart races, and I fucking shake, and I just, like, get all in my brain about, I, I don't like it, okay? It's not my favorite thing. If I can avoid it, I try to, which is why I was like, hey, like, can you not talk to me like that? But I'm not a pushover. I'm not a pushover. And, um... Because I'm, like, kind of afraid of confrontation, I've just had, like, the most tumultuous week of my life. And on the bright side, I'm also full sending it to New York. Um, at the time you're watching this, I am, this is a pre-recorded video, just by a couple days. Um, so, you know, pray for me and my mood. But I'm gonna go eat, pray, love all over New York City with my friend, Jaslyn. Um, so excited. We're gonna go to a comedy club. We're going to a couple of lesbian bars because she recently came out and she's like well we have to like go do this together and then we, we we went down this huge pipeline we're like am i allowed to go to that like me um because as of right now i'm i'm relatively straight i mean you know that can always change i don't know but like for right now and i was like so am i allowed to go and she's like i really don't know i haven't i haven't been like out like in my people long enough to like ask i was like well should you should we ask like so we're on like a tiktok fucking free thrall of like trying to get people's perspectives which I don't really know we're just trying to be nice and so we've come to the conclusion I'm allowed to go but like you know act accordingly because I re one reason I asked this is because I saw this video of this girl who was like I went to a lesbian bar with um one of their queer friends and then I I, I think it was something along the lines of like a straight dude and she's like in the video she's like it was like so weird like girls kept coming up to me like hitting on me and i was like and everyone was like because you, you went to a fucking a lesbian bar like it, it's it's in the fucking title you know like i don't go to to straight bars and be like oh my god men keep talking to me you should see the way men talk to me at work they're nasty disgusting okay
So, but we've digressed. Like, as long as I don't go and act like that, which I don't think I would, I hope not. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing and kind of grody. Um, I'm allowed to go. But I just want to go with her because she's a little nervous. And also, like, city you're not super familiar with, going out by yourself, like, kind of a bad idea no matter where you're going. So, I'm also going with her so I can, I can be the backup. These paws, I'm telling you, they're freaking dangerous. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess we can talk a little bit more about the build as we make it upstairs, finally. This is the longest speed build that has ever been on my channel to date, and I'm really proud of myself for it. So, yeah. But as you can see, we've made it upstairs. This is our second bedroom, um, and it's like, I imagine that they were twin bedrooms, and I love the way the two kids' bedrooms are my favorite bedrooms in the entire house. Actually, maybe that's not true. So, I imagine, so, the, uh, the first bedroom that we did, the blue one, was for um, a little boy... And then this one, I imagine, was for a little girl, and they were fraternal twins. Um, they have a little Jack and Jill bathroom, which I fucking love. I love Jack and Jill bathrooms. And then also we have an art studio upstairs. I'm not sure if I left that footage in or not, because at a certain point, like, this is a 45-minute speed build, not to mention the walkthrough tour we're going to do. So this is probably, like, an hour fucking build. I honestly could have two-parted it, but then I realized that, like, that's disgusting, and I'm not going to do that. You know when you're trying to watch those fun little, like, Reddit stories with the subway surfer guy? And, like, it's, it's like, so obviously, like, a view grab and, like, a money grab for them. And they make it, like, the video just long enough to qualify for, like, a beta program or whatever. Like, make money off of it. And then, like, midway through, like, it's not even a cliffhanger. They just cut it off. And then what's worse is you go to their page to look at the second one. They're either out of order or they're not tagged in the comments. Fucking fake-ass bitches. And then you go through and then it... It will reread the title to you, and that's already annoying, but, like, fair enough. Maybe, it, it's for some people, maybe they prefer that so they, like, know for sure they're watching the right video. Um, but then it'll, like, TLDR you and, like, give you, like, the gist of it, and you're like, I literally could have just skipped the entire part one and just watched this part two and literally know what happened. Um, so, like, I don't believe in part one and twos. <laughs> I don't. Um, and that might be solely the reason why at this point. Um... But yeah, as you can see, we're finishing up this little room. I put a lot of details kind of everywhere. Like, every single surface in the house has, like, something extra in it. And I will say, um, I did put laundry in this house, which I don't always do. I'm gonna be honest. I think I bought laundry day because I kept hearing other simmers talk about it. Because I really don't play with it that much. I do use the build assets and the design assets and stuff. But, like, laundry's honestly kind of annoying. And I can't even keep up with my own laundry IRL. You should see my guest room right now. It looks like an explosion, especially because I'm trying to pack for New York, and, like, it's gonna be cold, and I live in Florida, and, um, I've also been extremely stressed, and I spent all morning crying about those bully some freaking job people! Oh my gosh. Being a grown-up is hard. Anyway, we are now in the nursery, so this is, this is, we're halfway through our bedroom. I still believe we have two more bedrooms? Maybe this is only a six-bedroom seven bathroom house my bad I did not put a formal guest room in which I guess like could have been nice I did consider putting a pool house in and then ultimately decided not to because I wanted to have the tree house and I used a lot of the lot a lot of the lot um for like various different activities but I enjoyed the theme of this room I sized down that little camp or that little tent from the little campers kit and I don't know if it's playable, I don't know if it's functional or functioning, but honestly, like, other than making sure your kids stay alive until they're children, do you really play with them that much? I just thought it looked cute, and, like, the theme of this nursery is, like, I don't know if it's, like, forest or if it's, like, woods or, oh my god, what am I doing? And did you guys just see me size up that, like, little Bigfoot toy? But I don't know, but I thought it looked cute, and I was really going for more of, like, having good vibes all around than caring about functionality um and, and i i'm gonna be honest i i carry that sentiment around in my day-to-day -day life anyways um but i did enjoy the way it looked so like you know it's it's cute also every house or every house every room in this house has a closet um this is going to be oh this i can't remember if i made this a formal guest room or if i made it for another child i think i made it for another boy like a teenage boy 
that was the idea behind it. And then I also made a bedroom that I would imagine was for a young lady, but maybe she's, like, a young adult in college. She could also be a teen, but that's kind of what I was thinking, and she just, like, lives at home and commutes to university. Or maybe she graduated, and, like, she can't find a fucking job, and life is so hard, so she just lives at home because it's cozy there, and her mom is really nice and makes her sandwiches. I'm projecting at this point. I completely understand that I'm projecting at this point. I, the first time I got one of those comments, it was like, you are such a, like, a, a yapper. And it wasn't, like, a mean comment, but, like, it was like, I just love the way you just, like, yap all the fucking time. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, like, I didn't cry about it, but I did think about it a lot more, like, than a, a, a normal person would have. So, you know, watch your mouth. But, like, you guys aren't wrong. Because I get those comments quite frequently. Um, we're out here in the garden looking cute. I used a little camper's kit. I did cut out some of the landscaping. I'm not sorry. You guys did not want to see me do that. I'm a bad landscaper. There, I said it. Um, but, so, like, I be yapping. And at first, I kind of hurt my feelings because I'm sensitive. And I, I, like, take everything so personal. And, like, as a negative, too. Like, no one ever said anything negative about it. I, like, put that in my own brain. <sighs> you guys are right. I'm, I've, I've come to terms with that. Um, and I, I actually think I've come to the terms to the point where it no longer hurts my feelings. Um, thank God I cut all that out. I was like, are you guys about to watch me place every one of these individual little fucking rocks and be like, what the fuck? Um, but I made like a little garden pathway and I think this is so cute. I, cause when I first built the house, before I had even furnished any of it, I was like, holy shit, I put this on too big of a lot. And, like, it doesn't make any fucking sense that it's, like, this big. But I, I, I enjoyed it. This is, like, an estate. I don't know what the parents of this family do. Um, one of them obviously enjoys painting. Maybe professionally or as a hobby. But either way, it's, it's a tad. It's a tad much. Plus, I would have been, like, I had a friend growing up. Her name was Emily. Emily had, like, a basketball court, a fucking, uh a pool house, like, her house was this house, and we used to love fucking going over there. Like, this is the house that, like, whenever it's like, okay, like, do you want to sleep over at my house or your house? And everyone's like, let's sleep over at your house, because if your house looks like this, I would want to sleep over there, too. This is so fucking dope. And I don't, that might be wrong, but I, I don't necessarily care. I also cut out more landscaping. Again, I'm not necessarily sorry, because this is a 46-minute speed build. Here I am with more hobbies. There's marbles, there's hopscotch, there's a swing set, there's a garden table. Um, I'm assuming I used every pack that I own. I do not own every pack, so don't worry if you don't have Journey to Patu, you can still download this house, assuming you have the other, you know, two grand worth of DLC that I have purchased over the years. Honestly, that's like criminal that the Sims team does that, but like, what fucking ever. Um, we're finishing up a class like, the last few details. There's a lot of sitting areas in this house, and I did not playtest this house. I'm not gonna lie to you. I almost never playtest anything. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Because I don't play, or I don't build, blah, blah, blah. I don't play in a big majority of the shit that I, uh, build. Because I build a lot. And, yeah. Anyway. Um, but I did not playtest this house. And I would imagine, just based on how I know the Sims are, and the, the Sims 4 Sims are actually kind of smart. Um, I love this little thing I did with, these are lamps from Perfect Patio Stuff, and I just, like, it's obviously not functional, but, like, don't, tell me that's not, like, bougie as fuck, because it totally is. Anyway, again, it's very jumpy to watch this, I'm sorry about that. Um, but I would imagine your Sims are going to have a weird time routing around, because there are so many places to sit. And so many places to wash your hands, or wash the dishes, or throw your laundry out, or go to the bathroom. So, like, I don't know how good it'll be to play in this house, because it is just that big. But I do know it will look dope as fuck. And that's really what we care about at this point in time. Um, we're just finishing up our little splash pad. Did we- did I talk through everything else? Like, part of me is like, I'm missing some of the footage. That's literally- one reason that I, like, sound like I'm trailing off is because I'm watching this back and I'm like, oh my god, I, like- I'm missing footage. What am I fucking missing? I'm not missing footage. I was just so passionately telling everyone about the daily hardships of my life so far that I don't even fucking notice. Um, that might be a little embarrassing, but I'm not gonna lie. I feel better having just ranted aimlessly. Um, but if I get one mean comment, one mean comment, I'm literally gonna cry. Um, especially about my eyebrows because I literally told you guys about that. 
literally told you why the fuck that was happening. But we are kind of coming to the end. We're just finishing up the last few details of this house. And I hope you enjoyed this speed build. So why don't you stick around to the very end so we can go into our in-game live tour right now. And I will see you guys there. Okay, team, we have made it to our fabulous little mansion build. Um, she uses a gazillion freaking packs, and she's gorgeous, and I'm obsessed with her. And I'm going to start by showing you the outside per usual, and especially, like, the porches. This house has three different, four different porches. See, this house has so much, I, like, forget about it. But on the front porch, it's just got, like, a couple little, like, sitting areas, a little mom-and-pop rocking chair, which I think is, like, so adorbs. And then, of course, we have, like, the little side garden, um, which is so freaking cute. Obsessed. So we have, like, our little telescope area. I like the idea of having these pathways lit up by these little, like, candles. I believe those are from Perfect Patio stuff as well. And then, obviously, we really went all in on the little camper's uh, kind of area. And I am just totally obsessed. There's, like, a s'more area. Um, and then you can watch movies out here. I almost never use that particular movie screen. Then if you come in, you follow around the house, and we have our splash pad sitting area. A little, like, ooh, hello. A little kind of wagon. I put this kitty, little kitty camper radio out here, just, like, for the vibes. Then we have hopscotch and marbles on the other side. Two basketball uh, hoops, which is, like, kind of awesome if you think about it in real life. Then over here we have a sandbox play area and a fully functioning, I did, t I, you know how I just said I never play test? That's not true. I did play test this little fucking uh, tree house. But if you do download this house off the gallery, which is, by the way, always in the description box down below, my gallery ID is Tiana305, make sure you turn on move objects before you place really anything from the gallery. It just makes it easier, but especially this build. But we have a little play area. Then we have this chess kind of area. Um, obviously, it's not functional, but look at how cute it looks oh, at night. Like, it's really cute. I'm really excited. I like doing, like, little outdoor lighting just so I think it's, like, something to really easily overlook, so I like to put it. Then, of course, we have our outdoor bar and kitchen area. I sized down this little wine rack from Dine Out. It's actually, like, the size of a fridge. It's pretty big, but... It does clip a little bit, but I like the idea of how bougie it is. I also play tested the hot tub. I'm a liar. I do play test sometimes, just not a lot. So I play tested this. This hot tub is fully functioning. It works just fine. And I think I like the way it kind of looks like it's attached to the pool. And then if you go in live mode, I actually put some uh, little like fountain spewers. I um, place them in here so it'll spray like there's a waterfall and kind of make it more cohesive. Then we have some floaties and whatnot in the pool. Then we have this sitting area, which is, no offense, like, so cute. It, I put this here, but I don't like it, so I'm deleting it. Or actually, maybe I'll just get rid of this thing, because this is what I don't like. Okay. Um, sorry, that just fixed that little tidbit. Um, but we have this outdoor seating area, which is absolutely glorious. But I do think it's funny, so this coffee table, like, has a fire pit in it, and then there's also a fire pit. Basically, you won't get cold, okay? And then, of course, we have some little, like, lounge chairs. And then, of course, we have another porch. We have some planter boxes and um, a really nice little outdoor seating area. Nothing too crazy. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, then, of course, you go over here and you have the greenhouse, which I am mildly obsessed with. Um, there are plants out the wazoo here. Just, I had to hand place all of these because these table slots so weird from the little greenhouse garden kit, but I did it. No worries. Again, there's clutter on literally every surface humanly possible that I put in this house. And I just like the way this came out. It's so bright. I love the, the way everything paired with the floors from Eco Lifestyle. And then it's kind of got its own little side garden area. Another little sitting area. I had to obviously use these over dramatic statues from the Romantic Garden Stuff Pack, which, by the way, was free for a hot second. Then, of course, we have a chess table, and I sized up these little flower walls. I believe these are from Get Famous um, to kind of just add some color. That There's not, like, much else with that. And then we have our recycle bins and stuff around here. Then we have our garage back at the front, and that is the total outside Let's go inside. Inside we have a nice formal entryway. I love the doors that come with 
Strangeville. Strangeville. They're so fucking good. Um, let's go over here. Here we have, like, a little sitting piano room. I really struggled with what to do here, and at that time I ended up furnishing this last minute. I was like, there's not a fucking piano in this house. Like, that's criminal. How can I claim to have this house have everything and not have a piano? So I went ahead and did that. It's like a little formal sitting room, and I like this, like, kind of Marilyn Monroe-esque inspired painting on the wall. It's very, like, dramatic, and I think it's, like, nice contrast. Like, this is, like, a little bit more on the feminine side. And then over here we have the office, which obviously is, like, screaming, like, just dark, dramatic, love it. Like, this is, like, the kind of thing I'd expect to see in, like, a whiskey commercial with, like, the random man with a mustache and the deep voice. And he's like, I don't always drink whiskey, but when I do, horses. And you're like, what? Um, that's what I imagine this, they would film this commercial, and then I obviously put, like, a pool table. I love the way this came out. I like that there's, like, a sitting room. Then you come into the living room, which I spent forever on this living room, and then I kind of came up with this. It's kind of, it's very, like, light and airy, but then they have this, like, dramatic wall. I still don't know how I feel about the black, but I did commit to it, so we're kind of just vibing. And I love pairing the Book Nook stuff kit with the Desert Luxe kit. The furniture just, like, in my opinion, pairs pretty well. And then I use this particular painting, sized up and in different swatches, from Get Famous all over the house. So there's a lot of cohesion. I imagine that the people who live here, like, are big in the art. Then we have a dining room area, which is so cute. Very formal and dramatic. Like, the whole house. There's, like, a bar cart and a sitting area. There honestly could be more in this house. You want to know what this house is missing desperately? wall sconces. I'm just going to add those right now because why the fuck wouldn't I? Hold on. When I tell you guys, you have no idea how many hours went into this build because like what I just did adding in wall sconces, like every time I went into the build or I'd stop recording, I'd be like, okay, well like, let me add this like one more thing. Or let me add this one more thing. Let me add this one more thing. And I could honestly probably spend another hour on the build just adding in last minute details. Then into the kitchen, we have, like, a little pantry area, and I use this um, hexagon tile. I, it's technically a wallpaper from high school years, I believe, and it's the same one that's upstairs in the blue gamer room that we built. Um, but this kitchen is massive. We obviously have, like, a little porch access, but it is freaking massive, and I would love to have this. I like that there's, like, some open shelves and like a lot of variety in the cabinetry and then I'm pretending that that closet is a pantry but if it's nothing else it's an extra woohoo spot which is always a necessity okay but love the way this came out let's go over here we just like have some stuff for the pet like a little mud room almost and then we have the first bathroom that I'm gonna show you which is like I was inspired by this blue wallpaper or like with like the baby blue and pink and green I believe the wallpaper is from the uh, I honestly can't remember the, the name of the pack. Um, this pack. The, like, eclectic maximalist pack. You know what I'm talking about. It's a kit. And I paired the shower. Like, I made my own shower by, like, merging this into the wall. This is why I said. Make sure you put move objects on. But I like the way the baby blue tile from high school years matched the wallpaper. And I just overall think it's, like, very beautiful. Again, I built it. Then, this is where we add some of our more bizarre skill building items. We have a juice fizzy maker, a candle maker. We have our laundry area. We even have a water balloon fighty thing, a woodworking table, an old punching bag, bikes. This house has everything. And then if you downloaded it and you needed something specific to like plan, you can just add them in here. Then over here we have the world's nicest gym. I am obsessed and uh, I have literally not a lot to say, but it's like very cluttered. I liked using some of the everyday clutter kit stuff as seen over here paired with a lot of stuff from Spa Day and a lot of stuff from the Fitness Stuff Pack. And then of course, what mansion is complete without a fucking sauna? None of them. Did I put this addition on here just to have a sauna? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I'm not sorry about that. Um, now let's go to the other side of the house, which is all the way over here. We have like a little hallway and we have our primary bedroom, which I actually love the scheme, like the color scheme that came in here. It's very dramatized, but that seems to be a theme for the house. And then this area right here, like you guys watched it sped up and even sped up. I think it took me like three and a half minutes to do here. But when you keep in mind, it's on like six times speed. 
it took me like 25 minutes to do this little shelf area and like hand place everything and then these uh have like lights under them these shelves are from the new um kitchen stuff pack that we got i don't remember the name of it and then we have a walk-in closet this is our only formal walk-in closet in the whole house but it is serving it is cluttered beyond belief I absolutely love that it's like a whole glam room. It's giving Hannah Montana, like from her show, how she had the Hannah Montana closet behind a real closet. And I am obsessed. I could just feel like such a, like such a girl, such a queen in this room, okay? Getting ready, being slay. Then we have our primary bathroom. And again, clutter out the wazoo, hand put all this on here. I, I just want recognition for the time it took me to hand place everything I have. And then, again, all the bathrooms are different. This one is giving, like, very luxury, um, which is kind of what I wanted for the entire room, and I do think I achieved that. Now, let's go downstairs into the basement, and then we'll go upstairs. So, you go downstairs, and you're going to walk into what I would consider, like, the teen hangout room, but really, it's supposed to be, like, the movie theater kind of area, the media room, if you will. Then, over here, we have what I would consider to be, like, a tasting room, and then, like, the actual room where you would make and store the nectar. But this is just... I love this. Like, it's one of my favorite parts of the house. I like that there's so clearly something for every one of your sims. Like, every age group, every personality type, every demographic. Like, I love... And I also just love getting an excuse to use the horse ranch stuff pack, or expansion pack, because I say all the time, that pack is so good, but it's not my personal style, so I don't use it that much. Then over here, we have another bathroom that I obviously forgot to do, but like, sue me. I'm going to do it before I, I put it on the gallery. Then we have like a game room paired with some of these movie things to kind of tie into the media room aspect from Get Famous. And then we are in the bowling alley, which is so fun and I'm kind of obsessed with. We have like darts on the, on the wall, neon signs. I don't know if this is like a good room because I literally never built a bowling alley. Like I got the bowling stuff or the bowling alley stuff pack or whatever. Because I wanted to use the mid-century modern furniture, the bowling stuff is just, like, an extra layer that sometimes I think is cute. Um, but I did make sure to, like, get a lot of, like, different wallpapers in. I, I, I'm really happy with how the basement turned out, and considering... I don't think I've never built with a basement, but it's been so long I can't remember the last time I did. Anyway, we're gonna go upstairs, and when you go upstairs, you have this, like, little landing. It's really just a sitting area. I did try to use the space, but it was... Let's be real, it's kind of unusable, like, because of the way I laid out the house, but... We have this space, and then, of course, we have, like, a designated play area. Like, I feel all the rich people must have something like this. Like, don't you think? Um, and it is jam-packed, and I used the blue fuzzy carpet that came with the pastel pot pit because I wanted to use it, okay? And then, again, a little sitting area. Like, the nanny could sit here and, like, watch you or the mom. Lots of clutter. Area for family photos. Then, let's go over here. We have just, like, another little hallway. And then we have our little ladies' room right here. Um, we, it's very pink and yellow and just, like, very true to, like, peak girlhood. I, I just love it. I love the way it came out. I like that it feels very personalized and lived in. Um, like, I would have loved this room as a little girl. Then, of course, we have our Jack and Jill bathroom where I built, like, I did not play test this. Oh, that's a lie. I play tested the tub. I did not play test the shower, but you can get in the tub. Um, but it's on, like, a little platform, and it's, like, a walk-in kind of shower thing, and then there's, like, a little cubby for the toilet, and then, of course, I like that I did this with the mirrors and, like, added in some personality, um, and overall, I just think it's adorbs. Then, of course, we have our little gamer studs room. Um, they obviously love basketball, because why the fuck else would we have a full-size basketball court? Again, a lot of clutter, a lot of toys, and I'm not typically, like, one to gravitate towards making male sims, playing with male sims. Like, I'm one of the ones who's like, mm, which eeny, meeny, miny, the only girl heir is going to be the heir, period. Period. But I really had fun designing this, and I love this little, like, cubby thing I did. Um, I had a lot of help with that on stream, and I like that it's, like, his own little loft. If I was a kid, I would have thought that was, like, the dopest thing fucking ever. So, really, just 10 out of 10 slay. Then, of course, we're going to come over into our nursery. We did see this very well and good on the speed build. I, This is my least favorite room in the entire house. Um, not because I don't like where it was going, but I feel like it's a little unfinished. Um, I feel like the room was a little bit awkward in size and shape. But we tried our best, okay? And now, let's go over into the art studio. We obviously have, like, a little glam moment. 
Um, it's very detailed in here, and I don't know if maybe one of the children is really into the art, one of the parents is really into the art, maybe they're a family of artists, but I digress because it's so slay. Let's go into this hall bathroom. Again, another little different bathroom. This one is like all kind of green, organic, bamboo. I paired the for rent tile with the latest kitchen kit tile, and I actually think it looks really good. Um, this bathroom alone has like 86 packs in it, so I, I apologize. Then we come into another children's room, or maybe, I, I do imagine this is for a teen and they just love music. It's a little plain, but you know what, it was the last room I did. That's, that's literally my excuse. And then, of course, they have a little ensuite. Again, it's giving luxury. This could also be a guest room, which is why I left this bathroom sort of plain, because that was my original plan. But I also know I love popping out babies when I play with my Sims, so whatever. And then we have one more bedroom. Um, I don't know if this made this into the recording or not. It should have, but this room is, I mean, look at it. This is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This wallpaper from Paranormal Stuff Pack, I swear to God, if you hate the Paranormal Stuff Pack, you hate every other aspect of it, which there's no way you saw those sofas and the chairs and you hate it, but I digress. This wallpaper, look at the, oh fuck, look at the swatches on this shit. It is so fucking beautiful. Like, I literally couldn't decide, did I want this? Then there's the white one. Did I want this? At one point, we had this on the walls. At one point, we had this on the walls. We ended up going with the red because we like the way it paired with the gold accents. And I like the idea that this is, like, giving vintage luxury. Like, quiet luxury. I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe I didn't do that right. And then, of course, they have an ensuite bathroom. It's pink. It's girly. It's decorated quite nicely, if I do say so myself. And that is the overall house. Let me go like a bird's eye kind of view for you guys so you can see the overall floor plan. Overall, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bathrooms, six bedrooms. It has an office, a music room, a movie theater, a bowling alley, a game room, a nectar tasting room, an art studio, a basketball court, a greenhouse. A playground, uh, good God, an office slash study area, a gym, a garage, laundry. This house has, and I quote, everything. And I'm so proud of how it came out. This is the downstairs kind of bird's eye view for those of you who wanted to see it overall. And this house will be available on my gallery, which as always is in the description box down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you tell me your favorite part of the house. Did I miss anything? Because I said this house has everything. I know there's not a telescope, but... Or not a telescope, a rocket ship, but... I was going for aesthetic, too, okay? Like, leave me be. But did I miss anything else? Also, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. You're gonna want to hear about my trip to New York. I'm gonna have to tell you about all the bars we went to. Um, and how we just eat, pray, loved all around the city. We're going to a spicy romance bookshop that is located in Brooklyn. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. And... Um, I also just, like, love when you guys do that. Plus, I can't get a job, so, like, this YouTube thing is apparently gonna have to work. <laughs> That's a joke, guys. That's a joke. Mostly. But subscribe to my channel anyways. And thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to drink your water. I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.